Hello and welcome to the episode. I'm Dan, your host for today. I wanted to talk about laptops off eBay during this um, pandemic of ours. So this example behind me is a Dell Latitude uh, E6430. And the reason why I happen to have it is because a family member of mine bought it for another family member. And it was cheap and inexpensive, around uh, $300 or so. And uh, it had Windows 7 on it, and it had a hard drive. In fact, the hard drive is sitting right over there, and it's a one terabyte. But I happened to have a free SSD, that, but it was only 120 gigs. Uh, but um, I had it laying around, so we I decided to use it for them with the permission, of course. Uh, and then we just upgraded it to Windows 10. And the performance updates that you can get uh, by just buying an older laptop and updating it for the purpose of productivity um, is pretty impressive uh, with technology within the past five years or so. Uh, this particular processor has a uh, second gen Intel, so it's a Core i5. 200 or 2000 something uh, let's get that specifically for you it's a core i5 20 uh, 2520m it's a uh, two core four thread processor uh, but uh, it's got an nvidia gpu in it um, the nvidia nvs 5200m it's got a gigabyte of dedicated video memory and Windows decided to share four gigs of the RAM with it. Uh, it had two sticks of RAM uh, of different um, makes. Uh, they were both four gig sticks, so I replaced it with two uh, sticks that are four gigs, uh, but are the same. So there's, the timings are the same, the model is the same, and that's just gonna help with stability purposes. Whenever you update the RAM, you really should make sure all the RAM is the same failing that if you happen to have four slots and you happen to have two pairs uh, of different models put them on different channels uh, so you at least have that separation uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run a few tests productivity tests and see what you can get on ebay for like 300 bucks what kind of performance you can expect something from um, a very older laptop but with modern operating system with an ssd eight gigs of ram uh and a dedicated gpu apparently and um and of course the intel processor so let's run some benchmarks and see what kind of stuff you can do with it so going over the physical device itself it it looks fairly decently fine they've got some um laminate on here um, carbon fiber looks pretty cool. The trackpad seems to move around okay. As for the clickiness of the keyboard, like one of these, uh, the G5s and the G6s, these HP ones have a lot better feel to them. Typing on this, let's see. Hi, how are you today? I am well. So it feels a bit more mushy. I mean, I know like technically you can feel like a slight kind of bump. I don't know if that's just because the keyboard is older at this point. After all, it is an eBay, eBay purchase, so there's that. But I just, yeah, it's more mushy just when it comes down to it. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you're going for this particular model or just in any eBay laptop that you uh, pick up, uh, just keep that in mind. As for the flex of the laptop, I'm not really getting any. I mean, this thing is a tank right here. Yeah, there's really no screen flex at all on this thing. Um, and the deck flex, non-existent. Um, as for buttons, uh, what we've got um, is uh, we got two buttons down here and three up top. I don't know what this middle button does. I can't seem to get it to actually click anything. I thought it might be like a middle mouse uh, button 
uh, but that doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. Uh, but the left and right clicks up top, two at the bottom. The trackpad itself, although very small, doesn't actually have any um, buttons underneath. But you can uh, tap to click if you want to use that feature. I personally hate it. We have volume over here on the side with the mute button. Uh, we got uh, a shortened keyboard, so no numbs uh, at all. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at the I.O. So on this thing we have headphone, VGA, USB, we have a uh, Ethernet jack on the back and power. Um, we also have, I think that's a Kensington lock, it looks a bit squared off though, HDMI, uh, eSATA, and uh, two uh, Type A ports labeled as super speed. Uh, this one on the right has a little lightning bolt, uh, which means it can fast charge. And then we have an expansion bay called EC. Uh, we have a DVD player right here. Uh, I guess this is a Wi-Fi lock. Yeah, that looks like it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it. This one doesn't have the battery in it. I guess that's coming separately. But we do have the Dell dock, so if you're into that, you can do that. We have um, expansion bay right over here. That's where the hard drive goes. There is, uh, appears to be an M.2 under the case right up here. I did open this, but it wasn't populated. So I don't know if that's uh, M SATA or if that's just for like a Wi-Fi adapter or what have you, an extra one. But uh, I did see that over there. So that might be something to uh, take a look at. Let's uh, open up the camera and I want to see how good this looks. We still get some blown out, although it looks slightly better than the HP in terms of not being as blown out, but it's still um, iffy. This definitely, I would say, looks like a 480. It does seem to be tracking my face, so I wonder if it has Windows Hello or not. We do have two little dots up here, so I guess we can try that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you can see for yourself, it definitely is either, it's gotta be a 480, not even 720. Uh, with how grainy it looks but interestingly there's not much processing I don't actually think there's any processing going on in my face so as f terms of uh, that kind of soft look it's kind of like uh, pre HD so on TV when everything was uh, transferred to uh, tape you got those 480 lines but it did kind of look softer um, yeah that kind of got that kind of look going on so it's not high resolution but it's without any of the processing going on, it's actually kind of more of a nostalgic look than a terrible look, if that makes sense at all. Looks like Windows Hello is unavailable. Neither are any fingerprint uh, readers of any kind. There is also, does not appear to be any TPM module, so if you're into that, it does not appear like there is one that comes with this particular laptop. Let's go uh, benchmark some video games. So I just got done running the gaming benchmarks. We're installing um, 3D Mark. It wants to do the Skydiver benchmark because of a uh, VRM limitation. It, uh, time spy might not run correctly. Um, I just ran um, Rocket League and CSGO. I actually did CSGO twice because um, when I did Rocket League in its performance mode um, at the native resolution, which is 1600 by 900, I was getting um, high, over 60 FPS. It might dip to like 58 or so, but consistently over 60, um, getting around 70 at the um, high spikes. So when I was running CSGO, I was getting like 22 FPS at most around 30 at the native resolution. And I turned everything down, which is unusual I know I usually do it at defaults, but I wanted to see how high I could get it on this particular machine. So what I did is I re-ran CSGO and did everything as low as it could go. Um, and I had the resolution uh, in window mode set to 720p. So I think it was around like 833 by 720 or something, something, something of that nature. Um, but the FPS only rose at most up to like 55, but not consistently. That's like peak. 
the dips was down to 22. So we're talking about a high but amount between the lowest and the highest. Um, the average of just playing around uh, was between 30 and 42. Uh, so low 40s, high 30s uh, is what you can expect in in general play at that even that low resolution. And the temperatures uh, for the CPU were the were uh, ni- you know 80s to 90s. The GPU uh, obviously 81. You know, uh, getting right up to max there. So uh, as for gaming, um, it just depends on what esport title you're playing apparently i thought cisco could play in anything but i guess not um uh, but rocket league just blew it out of the park uh and i'm not sure what the deal is with that but uh yeah uh if you're going to play rocket league this thing would do it just fine let's go uh check out this uh 3d mark benchmark so going over the Skydiver benchmark results, um, total is 2,408. You'd have to compare that to the other computers to understand what that means. Um, graphic score, 2,231. Physics score, 4,051. Combined score, 2,384. Uh, comparing this result online says this is better than 8% of all results. Uh, so yeah we're uh kind of behind the curve uh but uh, it is an ebay laptop so um going over really quickly the screen resolution 1600 by 900 i wanted to test the audio and how well it plays um youtube videos so let's go ahead and take a look at that i have opened one of my 1080p videos let's see how well it plays and sounds have for you a review of the HP EliteBook 745G6 notebook, and this has a Ryzen 5 Pro. So, uh, all at the high end, none of the low end. Let's see how well 4K video plays. Hello and welcome to Simple Silicon. I'm your host, Dan, for today. Behind me, we have four laptops. So, 4K video plays just fine. Um, you know, you're not really playing 4K videos on the screen, but uh, if you wanted that bit depth that YouTube offers with 4K content, um, I'm not having any trouble skipping around, playing it. So I have uh, f- this uh, YouTube channel. I hope it's not going to get uh, flagged, but uh, let's test the music quality of these speakers. So, as I alluded to before, it's all on the high end, none of the low end. Really was expecting much of anything with the speakers uh, on laptops, just in general. Just listening to people talk, it gets you by. Uh, music, if you're playing techno, I guess, with no bass, then I guess they're perfect for you. But uh, if you're all looking for something that has some thump or just at least low end in the voice, yeah, you're not getting that here. So I'll definitely bring along a uh, pair of headphones if you want that. So in conclusion, I would say that we have a very good productivity machine. And that's pretty much been true about uh, all the laptops that I've been benchmarking uh, so far. Um, and that's just because productivity work such as Word and Excel and so forth never really need that much power. Hell, you can do that stuff on your phone nowadays. So I guess it really lies in where did the games kind of fall? And uh, Rocket League in performance mode uh, just blew it out of the water above 60 FPS. But uh, CSGO, on the other hand, put the settings as low as they could go, dropped the resolution to 720, and yet we're all still in a situation where we're struggling just to maintain 30 FPS. If you're looking at a wall, it'll go up to like 15, 60. Um, but it liked to hover around between 35 to 42 uh, with dips as low as um, 22 FPS. Um, I, I'm not a good read at frame times. I don't have a frame time chart, but it was seemed fine to me. As for temperatures, hot. 
So uh, during normal idle workloads, we're at 51 on the CPU, 46 on the GPU. Uh, if you're doing this to do productivity, then you should be fine. Uh, but other than that, have a uh, great day, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.